My name is Karen Maxwell. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Biochemistry at the University of Toronto. CRISPR is a really simple yet powerful tool that scientists can use to make changes in the DNA of any living organism. The function of CRISPR was first discovered in 2006 in bacteria used in the yogurt industry. It was shown to help these bacteria fight off the viruses that would otherwise kill them by acting like a pair of molecular scissors and chopping up the viral DNA. Scientists have since figured out how to take CRISPR out of bacteria and use it to make precise cuts in the DNA of any living organism. Because we know how to target CRISPR activity to any specific DNA sequence, we can use it to turn genes on and off, to fix mutations, or to insert a new gene. Today, there are three ways it's being used that could dramatically make a difference in our lives. The first is in the field of agriculture. Right now, scientists are using CRISPR to engineer crops that have improved yields, higher drought tolerance, and better nutritional properties. For example, a group in China recently engineered a rice strain that produces 25% more grains. With global population expansion and climate change putting increased pressure on crop production, this could have enormous benefits for citizens and farmers worldwide. The second way that CRISPR could really change our lives is when it comes to improving human health. CRISPR-based treatments are already being developed for cancer and to treat genetic diseases like muscular dystrophy and cystic fibrosis. CRISPR could also decrease the burden of genetic diseases on families and societies by correcting disease-causing mutations. The potential implications for human health are enormous. Finally, the third way that CRISPR could really improve our lives is by fighting infectious diseases like malaria and Zika virus. Today, researchers have already engineered mosquitoes that are resistant to the parasite that causes malaria. Using something known as a gene drive, this resistance can be passed on to 99% of the offspring. This gives us the possibility of stopping malaria in its tracks. This could have the potential to save hundreds of thousands of lives. There's a lot about the long-term effects of gene editing that we don't know, and a lot of important ethical questions remain to be answered. Should we be able to engineer the appearance or other characteristics of our children? Who will get access to CRISPR as a life-saving technology, and how can we assure equal access? Recently, in China, the birth of the first CRISPR babies was announced. This has caused most scientists to call for a complete moratorium on the editing of human embryos until we better understand what the long-term health effects might be. CRISPR holds enormous potential for society, but with this potential comes great responsibility. In order to build a responsible future, we need to have open discussions and have everyone weigh in on these issues.